Item B, receive report and provide direction to staff on additional alternatives for intersection improvements on Susan Drive. Please, Jimmy. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. The item in front of you tonight is regards to the intersection improvements on Susan, Susan Drive. Um, back on October 10th, uh, last year, we presented the results of the comprehensive traffic study completed by the traffic engineering firm uh, TJKM that evaluated the existing conditions along Susan Drive and several potential enhancements to improve sight distance, reduce vehicle speeds, and enhance safety for all modes of traffic. Uh, five different alternatives were presented during the meeting. Uh, the first was to not do anything at the intersection, and the others were to add pavement markings with striped bulb outs and installing stop signs on these minor streets along uh, Susan Drive. And uh, one of the other options was to install concrete bulb outs at these intersections and also to uh, install the raised uh, in, um, intersections uh, to reduce uh, vehicle speeds. And the last one that we presented was to paint red curbs uh, along um, the uh, along uh, Susan Drive uh, near the intersection. So the estimated cost for each alternative uh, was presented, and the cost uh, ranged from approximately eighteen thousand dollars to five hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars. So during the meeting, staff recommended the uh, recommendations by TSPC uh, for council's consideration, which is the installation of the concrete bulb out uh, improvements at the intersections. Uh, the estimated cost for that option was approximately uh, $432,000. The council supported staff's and uh, TSBC recommendation, but uh, express, expressed concern about the high cost of the alternative and, re and requested staff to develop and evaluate lower cost options for consideration. So we're here tonight to um, present additional uh, options for council's uh, consideration. Um, all of these options consider several factors uh, that included level of protections uh, provided to the pedestrians, the effect on drainage, and uh, ease of use for visually impaired uh, pedestrians and cost. So the first alternative uh, that we are presenting is similar to the one that was presented in the JKM uh, recommendations, which is to use striping at these intersections. And although this option does not uh, affect uh, drainage, it provides the um, the least amount of protection for pedestrians, and it will pose some challenge to visually impaired residents as, you know, since the crosswalk will be closer to the, the intersections uh, uh, towards the street, uh, there'll be no means of uh, uh, pr protection uh, or to guide them uh, into the, uh, the crosswalk. So here's just some of the examples that we found online here. Um, you know, in San Francisco, they used um, some colored uh, um, at the intersections to, um, for like type of a bulb out, and there's picture that we found uh, from New York at the uh, intersections there. And the bottom uh, one, that you know, the striped uh, uh, kind of bulb out uh, locations to, to um, deter cars from driving in that location. So, uh, and that's something that we're, we're, that was one of the options that we're uh, considering. Uh, the second option that we're, that we consider is to adding what's called an, uh, channelizers. Uh, these are, you know, this flexible uh, plastic, um, post about you know two inch in diameter and three feet tall and uh, this option provides some protection for pedestrians but still pose some challenges to the uh, visually impaired pedestrians uh, there's not a continuous detectable path uh, for them and this option will create some difficulties for street cleaning equipment um, so here's just some options that we found online too at these intersections so there's post uh, uh, at these uh, corners and um, and, uh, and, and, and colorful paving uh, that, that's been placed there from Seattle uh, into these two locations. So the third option that we are looking at is to include the, uh, the striping and the, the, um, the what is called an asphalt dike or a concrete curb. Uh, these, these dike or curb is approximately maybe six inch high, similar to a freestanding curb uh, or berm. And this option uses the, the dike to create some level of protection for the pedestrians. And the drainage will be impacted, but these breaks in the berms can be provided to allow for water to flow. Um, this option also uh, has some issues with maintenance as trash may accumulate uh, inside the and um, street sweeping equipment may not have, uh, may not be able to get into it to clean. So i show you some examples of what we found. Um, show you this in Washington, D.C. So you can see that there's this concrete um, little uh, berms areas that with with channelizers installed. So the last option, and this is 
another type of a concrete berm that's placed on the, uh, the intersection. So the last option is basically all of everything in one. Uh, so we're looking at striping, channelizers, and, and the AC berms. So have all, all three components uh, placed into one alternative. So this is what we're currently recommending uh, as an option to conclude. Uh, and all of the costs were evaluated. And the cost shown in the staff report, it's a bit low because it didn't include uh, the striping improvements on Susan Drive and the replacement of the crosswalks uh, with continental style crosswalks and the installation of the stop signs on the minor streets. So once these additional costs were, uh, were included, the cost is as follows. So we're ranging from about $23,000 to $71,000 in, in our options. So we're here tonight to seek uh, council's further direction on these improvements and there are no fiscal impact uh, to this update. And it concludes our presentation. We'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for the report. Questions of staff? Or the chair. Comments? Please, Michael. Good. So, um, can you um, talk a little bit about the overall concerns that we've had in the area? Because it seems like we're focused a lot on pedestrian safety on the corners and site visibility, but I understood that there were some bigger issues with overall the, the speed on um, on that, and I don't think that this addresses that at all. Um, I've also heard concerns in that neighborhood about the parking, and it looks like this solution would minimize the loss of parking, um, but I don't see it addressing the speed issue. So uh, was the study that, that was commissioned, did that focus on speed at all, or was it strictly about visibility at the intersections? So both both were looked at. So the mainly was the site distance issue that was uh, that was reviewed at the intersections because um, because of an accident that happened in 2014, um, and also the way the inter intersections are configured towards the minor street when the cars are approaching Susan Drive, they're unable to see the oncoming traffic. So there's you know, there's site distance issues at these intersections. Um, one of the alternatives that was presented in the TJKM's report was to install raised intersections to reduce uh, vehicle speeds, and that was included as part of the alternatives. Um, parking was also reviewed uh, as part of the report. Uh, we were looking at um, re removing, but with the rest, with red curbing alternative and without any bulb outs uh, that, that was included, we're looking at about 30 parking spaces that were going to be removed as part of the alternative. And the, uh, the remaining other alternatives uh, looked at uh, or with a total of about 14 spaces that will be removed as part of those alternatives. So with any of these alternatives, we lose 14 spaces? Correct. All right. But and again, getting back to my original question, it really does nothing to address the speed of the cars that are going up and down Susan? Not with these alternatives, no. Okay. All right. Thank you. Other questions from council? Marty? Do we know yet exactly what we're getting? Are the staff still deciding on the colors? Because I saw a lot of different colors up there, and I, I you know, just wanted to have a better understanding of what we're approving, what we could approve tonight of, of those various options. Do we have a final design, or where are we with that? We don't have a final design. It's many of the concepts that we're, we're, we're um, presenting here tonight, because there's so many variations that we can do at, at, at these intersections, right? It really depends on the, the cost factor. So the alternative that we presented back on October 10th was to install the concrete bulb outs, which was the recommended alternative that the city, that the TSPC and staff um, um, uh, actually was in favor of, um, you know, due to the cost of that. So these are the other types of different alternatives that we're presenting tonight. Um, and it, you know, it's a, it's a more, less cost effective alternative. Um, it may have the same effect uh, as well as a concrete bulb out. Right. I, uh, I recall that. So if we were going to choose the, the largest one combined everything, do, do we know the colors that you're going to be putting in there? No, it's, no, those colors are just an example of what other agencies have done. So we, we, you know, we can select any colors we want, or we can choose to just put stripes, striping down at the, uh, at the intersections. Okay. 
Other questions? Council? I'll try to talk through this process a little bit. So, and, and I want to follow up with Michael's questions because I had the same concern. So, the speed on Susan Drive is not going to be addressed in this process, in this solution, right? The su speed on Susan Drive is a unique situation because you have going north and south on Susan really no oncoming traffic from the right side. You've got sort of a free rain and, and vehicle speed. It's just, it's a tendency to speed. You can't, uh, the traffic, it's my understanding the traffic, and, and you can, staff can clarify mm -hmm. if a request for a stop sign at those intersections were requested, but that was denied because there wasn't a need. And you can't install a, a stop sign when you're trying to control speed. Stop signs are installed due to crossing the street. No one's crossing Susan Drive. They're crossing a Jeffrey. They're crossing some of the other side streets. So crossing the intersection is not the issue. Really what we're trying to address, and I think it's the main point, and that is vehicles exiting one of the side streets onto Susan Drive and ensuring their safety. A vehicle coming off of Susan Drive, coming onto that intersection. So if I'm at the intersection of Jeffrey Drive and Susan and I wanna go out onto Susan, I'm trying to create a space for me to kind of come out a little further and have better view and to add either the striping, the striping, the channelizers, the striping and the, and the asphalt dikes. Um, all those pieces hopefully in, increase my perception of being able to clear visibility. So striping, we all know, isn't gonna make the answer, right? It's not gonna prevent a vehicle from driving over those painted lines. I don't know the color is gonna make a difference either. It might help, but I don't think it's really gonna encourage it. Um, channelizers help identify that specific area by little bumps, but Again, I don't think that's gonna do it. Um, I think if we're gonna do anything, I think we really need to prevent the vehicles from driving into that specific area and that you're going to need to do the dikes, some sort of raised concrete. Um, is it pretty? No, but safety is a concern. And I think it's a process, we go through this process. I think it's a unique situation in, in this neighborhood. Um, but it's also something that I'm concerned about in other parts of San Bruno. So I don't want to do something that doesn't make sense. The 400 and something thousand dollars makes no sense. We can't afford that in a city to go out and spend that kind of money at different intersections. I think this is a good cost effective way to try to address the um, entering and exiting off of Susan Drive from one of those side streets. And I, so I'm thinking that we need to go at least include the dikes into that process. Lorraine? Michael, I, I do agree oh. with her. I do have a concern about cleanliness up there, and I know we were talking, and some other people were talking about doing an adopt a storm drain. So maybe we could get people to adopt that area to keep it clean. Michael, uh, so, so Jimmy, all the uh, the pictures that you showed us, they were all uh, none of those were residential areas. So I mean, I mean does, is it? I would imagine that this is pretty uncommon in a residential neighborhood. Those all look like big thoroughfares. And um, they all look like busy intersections where there probably would be a lot of pedestrian traffic and something like this would make sense. But I mean, do, have we seen this anywhere else in a residential neighborhood? We were, um, have you, Michael? Yeah. I haven't actually, but yeah. Um, so I think you're right in your observation about the photos that we showed, but it is not a situation where these are not used in residential neighborhoods. They do get used in residential neighborhoods as part of traffic calming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And, and do we really believe that had this one of these solutions been in place um, at the time that that motorcycle accident occurred that it, it would have prevented it or could have prevented it? I won't be able to answer that. Um, it really depends on the driver at, mm -hmm. at that moment. But I would think the um, by having the the uh, the, inter the crosswalks a little bit closer towards the uh, the street and allowing the driver to be able to approach you know the street a little bit further out, he'll be able to see the oncoming traffic. So um, that I can say that it improve the visibility of that intersection if if the improvements are made. Okay. Please. 
So <clears throat> it's hard to say if it would have stopped anything. You know, it's hard to, um, to prevent an accident. But the lawsuit was something that I was, maybe the city attorney could probably shed some light on where there wasn't anything out there. And um, the lawsuit was pushing to, for, for the city to be responsible for not having anything out there. So we're doing something to improve the safety. It will not solve the speed. Speed is, is something that you can't solve without um, doing the speed study and determining what, what the safe speed for that street would be. And, and Laura summed it up real well about how putting a stop sign isn't going to do anything for speed. So I was wondering if, we, if, if the city attorney could possibly just a little bit of information on the lawsuit and why um, the settlement was made for such a large amount of money. Sure, I'd be happy to address that. So I, I don't think we're here to uh, re redebate uh, what what the cause of the accident was. I think all auto accidents uh, often have multiple complicated causes, and the facts are unclear. In many of these cases, they were unclear in, in that case. Uh, we're also not here, I think, to speculate about whether these improvements would or would not have prevented that accident from occurring. I think the city's goal instead in spending a great deal of time and money with all of these studies and investigations has been to make each of those intersections onto Susan Drive, not just the one that was involved in the accident, but each of those intersections as safe as possible, both for vehicles that are exiting those uh, streets, as Council Member Davis has indicated, onto Susan Drive, but also make it safer for the cars that are traversing so that on Susan so that they can see those, those vehicles. And while uh, maximizing the sight distance, also maximizing the amount of, of parking that's available and stated another way to, to, to minimize the loss of parking. So those were the goals of the, of the city and uh, speed had been an issue before. You're, you're right about that. That's been addressed uh, in a number of ways over, over the years up there. Uh, there have been concerns about parking. There were concerns about sight distance and that's, that's the reason why we're, we're here tonight. So I think it's important that, that the alternatives before you are really intended to make the entire area safer for uh, vehicles on all of those side streets, pedestrians, and the vehicles on, on Susan Drive. Okay, so this is obviously an item for receiving the report and giving direction to staff, which can be at any level or whatever we need to feel comfortable with to go back. Is there any thoughts from council on what direction they'd like to give to staff? To the chair? Please, okay. Michael. Uh, I was just wondering if uh, the members of the, uh, of the Traffic and Safety and Pedestrian Committee have any, anything to add based on their observations? Residents from the neighborhood, anything to add? John is saying no on, uh, hold on the, for the committee. Don't know. <laughs> Tom, go, I'll go. I will echo that the whole um, point and the whole reason behind our recommendation, the initial recommendation of the um, curbs, the, the bulb outs, um, was not to address speed. The, and w we do understand that speeding on Susan Drive is a, is a concern. Um, we did recommend increased enforcement. There's really not a lot that can be done from an engineering perspective to address speed on Susan, at least not from the, not from the information that has been brought before us. Um, you know, raised tables in the in the uh, intersections and other quite expensive um, things might might do the trick, um, but those are not, those were not the options brought before us. What we were asked to do was to what you guys have, have been already already saying: make these intersections safer by allowing the cars from the side street greater visibility. The other option that we had for doing that was a real super cheap option which was to red zone uh, as far down as necessary to ensure that a car stopping where the limit line is today can see adequately up and down the street. And that was going to remove dozens and dozens of more spaces. So that was, that was not an option because of the um, parking crunch that's in that neighborhood. So that's why, that's why we're at where we are right now. Thank you. Well, one other thing. The, 
by bringing these bulb outs out to the, tra the traffic lane, it does, it, it, from my understanding from other things that we've done, it would provide, at, at least just for the southbound traffic, a visual narrowing of the lanes, which we have seen to reduce speed in some areas, uh, similar to what, we, what happens with the limit lines. So it would do nothing for northbound speed, but southbound speed might have a small benefit. Before you leave, Tom. So um, I, I know you guys have looked at a lot of different options and you, and you have the, the toolkit that you refer to occasionally. Anything else in the toolkit that, that you would recommend that could possibly help with um, reducing the speed? Just the, the raised intersections. That, that was the only thing that was out there. That's it. Okay. I mean, the, the we talked about, did we mention putting a speed? Uh, oh, the speed signs? Speed sign, I thought that was that's, I mean, the, the, discussed. That, that's an option. The, those have mixed um, effectiveness, sometimes especially on Sometimes we we get people who actually see it as a challenge to see how high they can get the number. Um, so you don't necessarily want that. Um, I don't know if they would be effective here, and I think staff would be more qualified to answer that question than I. If, if I could just um, be insert here, uh, the city attorney did remind me that uh, some time ago, the city did take action to enhance the signage along Susan Drive, the speed signage. Um, in addition to that, we we do periodic um, enforcement, what do they call it? Enhanced enforcement, shall we say, e extra eyes on um, speed issues. And um, this was, as council members may recall, um, Susan Drive was part of our recent speed study um, and so it's, it's not an issue that we have neglected or ignored. Um, and as various individuals have said, speed is a, is a um, in many respects, a ongoing management issue, which is very tough to address in a, in a um, conclusive manner. Okay. Is there anybody else from the public who wanted to speak? Or? Well, they're not going to be able to hear you or see you at home. It's your, it's your claim to fame, huh? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Through the chair, if I may, while the gentleman is going to the microphone, there's one other important yes, aspect of the design of the improvements for all of these intersections. It's not obvious unless you, you're out there, which I know many of you have been, but the actual geometry and elevations of each of those intersections is different. And the, the, the first thing that I noticed when I went out there and spent a lot of time at each of those intersections is how different the perspectives are from cars coming out of each of those, uh, of those roads. And so that's one of the reasons that necessitated uh, a design that was proposed like this so that you have a consistent design among all of those intersections so you don't get so much visual clutter that each intersection is looking different, which isn't aesthetically pleasing either. All these, these issues are very important. However, the biggest issue is the parking. The parking is what's causing the problems on the intersections because the people are parking in the intersections. When you come down one of the streets, you can't see anything. The speed up there is horrendous. They lowered the speed limit down from 45 to 25, which simply meant the people coming down slowed down from 60 to 50. Now, I have to come out of my driveway daily. I narrowly miss getting hit on a daily basis. There are so many cars parked on the street that we can't see anything coming out of our driveway. We're in the middle of the block. And this has been going on for years. I've lost three cars up there because of speed. So, I mean, it's, it's something that has to be addressed. The accident you're referring to, that was long overdue. Someone up there is going to get killed. It's got to be addressed. The speed is the biggest issue. Secondly, the parking. The, ho the uh, apartments on the top of the hill said when they were building, and I went to one of the meetings, they were going to have underground parking. They were going to have ample parking for two, 300 cars. Never materialized. Now they tell the people if they have two cars, rather than pay an additional $200 for parking, 
parked down Susan Drive. Yesterday, excuse me, the day before, I was coming home. Guy's coming in with a truck to park in front of my house. I asked him, please don't do that because I have it parked there. He moved. Yesterday, I was gone for half an hour. His truck was right there. I put a note on his car, please don't park here. Park where you live. He came down, got in his truck, drove around the block, parked two houses up from me. This is an ongoing problem. We sit in our living room in the evening, and I hear cars going down the street. They have to be doing 60 plus miles an hour. Someone's gonna get killed. So it has to be addressed. Thank you. Mr. D uh, for the record, is Mr. Downs, what's and what street? Susan. Uh, Susan Drive. Well, it's for the record. <laughs> so. Susan Drive. Thank you. Other comments? Uh, just one last one. Please. So so my, my only concern with all of this is it, it only seems that we're making it safer for people to speed on there. And it, it almost doesn't address the, the real issue, which is the speed. And if we were able to control the speed, then all these other things would probably be unnecessary. So that, that's really my, my only concern with this. Um, I, I think that, you know, the, the solutions that you proposed are, are very thoughtful and, and uh, I appreciate the fact that you guys went back and came back with, a, with the cheaper solutions. Uh, than what we saw last time, or what uh, the last council saw last time. Um, but it really still does seem that we need to do something about this speed. Now, I, I think on most of Susan Drive, on um, the non-populated side, that's all red curb. Is that is that correct? It's all on the east on, side. On the skyline, the skyline side. side. It's, it's, there's no parking along that side. Yeah. yeah. So would there be any opportunity at any point there to allow parking on that side and effectively narrow the street and uh, no, no, there's not enough width. There's not enough width. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Marty. Oh, that you were, I'm sorry. No, I was thinking that the, the, direct, um, the direction that we provide would, uh, I would be in favor of option four. Any other thoughts from council for direction to staff? Irene? Oh, um, I understand why we would want, op I, I would, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm sorry, I had a cold and, and uh, medication and I'm kind of whatever. But anyway, striping and asphalt, uh, concrete dikes, I think is enough to do what we need to do without adding the extra pieces to it, and it's a reasonable price. Um, I understand uh, what Councilman uh, Salazar is saying about addressing the speed, but as the other gentleman said, it's about parking. So you can't, you, the option to uh, red curb everything was given to us before, and there was complaints about that would take away all parking from everybody. Um, we had uh, options about uh, controlling the speeding, which was horribly expensive. I think this will do what it should do, and then maybe we can address some kind of, I don't know what, parking permit maybe, or something like that up in that area. So that might help alleviate. The problem with parking permits is again enforcement. So you know, there's, there's no easy solution for any of this, but maybe some kind of combination will help. So I would suggest that we do number three. Laura. I also have a concern, as Michael has stated, with the speed and that we should do something. And I think, you know, we're limited on our ability to what we can do. But I think, I know that there's been recent improvements. I'd like to see if staff can go back and look at potentially other options for improving um, the lessening of the speed on that sh on Susan Drive. So I would like to make that as part of a recommendation, but I also am willing to accept item number three, which is including the striping, the asphalt, and the dikes. In terms of parking, if you were attending a meeting here last week, you would hear it's not just on Susan that the parking is an issue, it's everywhere. Um, Shelter Creek is an overflow of problems. Lower parts of San Bruno are overflow of problems. 
But I, I guess I would ask the question is, I hear, I've heard that comment a few times that the residents aren't parking at the complex because they don't want to pay for parking. So I don't know if staff has gone back to the complex to see, is there anything that they can do by offering more parking, number one, and is that true that really residents aren't, aren't parking there? I mean, the reality of it is, is that, you know, apartments were rented out or, or condos were sold for two bedrooms and two people live there, and nowadays it's two, four, and six, and eight families living in these places because they just simply can't afford it. So the parking that was available or provided when these, this development was built was adequate, but times are changing. Nobody can afford homes over a million dollars. So I think that's a, a part of the problem as well. Um, but anything that we can do from a, a staff point of view by contacting, communicating, and ensuring that they're doing everything possible on their site, that they're utilizing the parking on their site to the best of their ability, that would be appreciative. Um, and anything that staff can think of outside the box about trying to reduce speed, I think we should. Um, I, I see a sign that says you're going 35 miles an hour on a 25. It makes me slow down, so I think there are people who do listen to that. Uh, I'm not sure what staff thinks in recommending that, but if we can spend some time in trying, in trying to improve the speed, I think I don't want to come back here talking about another incident that occurred um, that we couldn't do more. So I'd like to see if we can do more about speed. And I'm willing to support item three, which is striping asphalt dikes concrete curb. Michael? Your option? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, Jimmy, the, um, the asphalt uh, dike option, um, concrete curb, how permanent is that? If we decided that it's causing too much trouble with street sweeping or flooding or whatever, how, could we yank them out? Yes. Okay. All right. And, and in that case, then I'll, I'll go along with option three. Okay, so what I've heard is, uh, and correct me, Council, I've heard one for option four, three for option three. I've also heard about trying to reach out to the complexes up there to check and communicate uh, with their management as far as parking and concerns from the community and the neighborhood. I've also heard a uh, comment from Council as far as speed is still a concern that they'd like to have looked into, whether it's the speed sign that's on Crestmore or if there's some other options that can be uh, looked at, but not to let that fall off the radar because there obviously seems to be a concern. But we do know in the end, parking is what we hear, as Mr. Downs said, is that they're parking in areas, and unless we red zone it all, which we could, and it does prevent it, but then the neighborhood has to understand the parking will even be tighter. And I do know that uh, those homes um, fortunately have, for the most part, two, uh, a driveway for two vehicles and a garage for two vehicles. So there is parking upon uh, the persons who are there in the complexes, that's probably another issue. I know that we've also learned in the parking permit aspect is that you can't prohibit uh, an apartment dwelling, a unit up there, to say they can't get parking permits to park on Susan. You cannot tell them that they can't when others can uh, in, in the residential area. So I don't know if that could help or not. Um, did I assess that fair from what I heard this evening from council? Does staff have direction? We do. Uh, we'll proceed with option number two, uh, three. Three. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I forgot to ask you what your we'll, choice was. We'll yeah. look at speed um, and um, we'll make contact with the, there's actually two apartment complexes, Correct. I think, that are at issue here. We'll check in with both of them. Thank you. Anything else, Jimmy? Uh, 